Hmm, I wonder if these guys have a union. Here's a look at the new NECA toys, Gremlins 2, the new batch, Demolition Gremlins. The Gremlins are back, and this time they've taken control of the New York City media mogul's high-tech skyscraper. Figures include interchangeable hands, removable hard hat, barrel, mallet, bomb, can, dynamite, and dynamite plunger. I'm thinking I'm seriously going to have to speak with their foreman. Before we get a closer look, no, seriously, they've made an absolute mess of this. If that's following a blueprint, I, I want to see what these blueprints look like. Before we get a closer look, though, at the NECA Gremlins 2, the new batch, Demolition Gremlins, let's go ahead and first figure out how tall the figures stand. Now, roughly, they're going to be of the same size to one another. The green gremlin, I don't think they actually have names. Not that gremlins really generally have names, but the green one does seem slightly taller. But we're going to go ahead and just measure one of them and kind of get the good gauge that that's the same for both the figures. Sounds good? I hope so. First of all, the green gremlin is six inches in height. And to spin that around, you're looking at both the fingers, roughly, rough, roughly about, about 15 centimeters tall. All right. Let's bring in some figures for comparisons now, shall we? I always have to warm my hands up if I'm going to be doing that. First of all, that's what both the demolition gremlins look like next to a regular ultimate gremlin. You can see there's definitely a size difference between the two. Here's what they look like next to combat gizmo. And just recently had a look at, here's what they also look like from Brain. Oh, compared to Brain, as Brain was also from the same movie, Gremlins 2, the new batch. If the accessories were a cup, then the cup runneth over. As NECA has packaged what seems like all brand new accessories that have not been released with earlier Gremlins before. Speaking first, though, of the blueprint, as I did want to see and inspect that earlier. Yeah, we get ourselves a blueprint, a paper blueprint of the Statue of Liberty. Judging by all of these X's down below at the bottom of the base, these X's right by her feet, and the no sign logo across her face, I'm judging that the gremlins want to blow her up. Now, I don't think, even with all the things that they come include with all these sticks of dynamite, that that's enough to take down Lady Liberty. But can Lady Liberty ever cut a break? Between the gremlins wanting to blow her up and an ore getting covered in pink slime and Ghostbusters too, how are they able to even move a steel statue that has no posability just because they're covered in pink slime? as a topic for another day. But I do like the fact that they included this. This is always something nice to include. Like I would probably be more inclined, I think, to probably put this on display, maybe take a little bit of tape, some clear tape. You don't really want to use Mac tack because like tacky stuff on the back usually ends up staining the paper. But a little bit of clear scotch tape, maybe stick that behind the, the figures when I'm going to be putting them on the shelf. As yes, I will be putting these guys on the shelf with the rest of my Gremlins figures. So I like the fact that they include a little blueprint I don't know the realism of actually being able to blow up Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, just by the four down below X's and the two at the top. I think you're going to need a little bit more than what they've got packing right now. Anyways, we're going to put that to the side. Seriously, how can you move the Statue of Liberty with pink slime? Music or not, green slime or not, and even an NES controller, you're not going to be moving a statue that's made of steel. Anyways... The figures also come included with Acme TNT, something that the Coyote would be quite envious of. It's all hollow because actually you can take the top of the barrel and open it up. And inside there's absolutely nothing, at least for right now. But you know, considering that they have as many things as they do and you really only have four gremlin hands to work with, you could technically take like all the sticks of dynamite and all the other things we're about to have a look at and just store that away in here if you want to have it on display and not have to put them back into the plastic. So I like the fact that they included a cool little barrel like this. Again, not something we've seen before. I'm going to put that to the side. You know, eventually, if they ever do release down the road a Friday the 13th Part 4 Jason Voorhees, I'm sure they probably could release, re-release this barrel and just put like toxic waste inside. You can probably see where I'm going with that. I'm going to put that to the side. And then the figures also come included. Now, this was kind of cool. They come included with a little can of beer. Now, why would you say it's beer and not like soda, for example? Well, if you look to the side, <laughs> 
I ended up having to take a picture of this because it was even too hard for me to see. It actually has ingredients of water, yeast, barley, and hops. Those are all the things that make up beer. And then actually, funny enough, next to it, it says drink responsibly right there. So that's kind of cool, the fact that they would have actually included it. Uh, nice thing also is that they didn't use a label. Well, they did use a label, but like the previous labels we've seen with cans usually come right off. They look It looks like they've really adhered this to the actual can. And it looks like, yes, I don't know how responsibly these gremlins have been drinking their beer, but it looks like it has already been opened. I don't know if it's actually... Well, it's not empty. It's, it's just plastic. But that's pretty cool. And of course, you've got on the front there, Grems and Clamp Center. Are they serving beer at the Clamp Center? I'm going to put that to the side. Uh, other things that come include with the figures, you get yourself several sticks of dynamite. Luckily, none of these are lit. If they were lit, I don't know how easy it would be for me to be holding these. I probably would be chucking them quickly before they go off. Even as small as they are, you shouldn't be holding fireworks or anything in your hand because you'd be blowing these things off. Uh, they each have wicks. None of them have been lit. The wicks themselves are actually wire frames, so you can bend them if you want to. It would be kind of cool if they could have actually added a few little lit ends to at least two of these. So you could have had non-lit wick uh, sticks of dynamite, and you could have had ones that actually were lit. And then if you want everything sort of more wrapped up, there's a big bunch of a dynamite all taped together. Nice coloring done both to this. And then, of course, you got the wrapped tape on both the ends. Funny enough, there's actually no wick on this one. So I don't know what they would exactly be lighting on this. Or they have to maybe put like a little detonator on the front of it. Is that really what works with dynamite? But I think a wick would have also worked quite well for this. It doesn't come included with it. All of these, by the way, the things I've just finished talking about, sticks of dynamite don't fit really the nicest in their hands. They're sitting way too loose. One thing you can also do too, as I've already now discovered, is you can also take the stick of dynamite. It almost looks like he's holding a smoke in his hand. But that's one way you can actually have them holding the dynamite, sort of have to wedge them in between their fingers. The actual big bundle of dynamite works a lot better, as you can wedge it in between their fingers and their thumb. And of course, you can also take the beer too. Now, the beer is also something I would probably say, I'm just going to put the green gremlin down here for a second. They also come with some swappable hands that actually have a bigger grip. These hands are much better suited for holding the beer. Again, drink responsibly. So they come included with some swappable hands too. Another thing they come included with is a bomb. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Now, luckily, this one also is not lit. It's light. It feels like it's also made of like a hollow plastic. But you can see in this case... It looks more cartoonier, the fact that they've actually colored the wick red. Other than that, it looks kind of neat. It does almost look like I could separate this, but for the obvious reason of breaking, I'm not going to be doing that. Comes in clue with that. They also come in clue with the dynamite plunger. Now, the plunger itself does actually pull higher up. Not too high. I mean, it's not going to go very high at all, but enough at least that you can actually realistically push it down and detonate everything around it. And you can see it says Acme down below there as well. Again, like the barrel that we've looked at already, the Acme TNT, they've added a little bit of a dry brushing of brown to it just to kind of match it. I mean, it's not quite the same coloring of brown, but at least it kind of keeps things nice and aged looking. Something the figures also come in clue with, I'm just going to kind of move these hands out of the way for the time being. They also come in clue with a mallet. Now, even though I could tell myself it's plastic, and I could tell you guys it's plastic as well, it actually does have sort of a feel to it, like it's really, really light wood. It's not obviously wood. It is plastic. As you can see, there's the seam line right there. But I tell you, though, it actually does feel, feel like it's made out of wood. I do like the grain that they've actually added to it. Unfortunately, though, the problem with the mallet is there's really not a good place to have it properly held in the gremlin's hands. The brown one seems to hold it better. But even then, like the mallet sits way too loose. I would probably suggest, if anything, if you're looking to display the figure with the mallet, don't have the arm up. If you have the arm down like this, at least it can rest against the two fingers. If you're going to bring like the arm up, for example, then the mallet seems more inclined to fall out of the hand, even though it's not doing it right now. Funny enough. It also makes the figure a little bit more front heavy, too. The last of the accessories that come included here, I'm just going to get the brown one here to stand, comes also included with a hard hat. And on the front, it says Little Grems. I think that's adorable. It's made again here of plastic, gray plastic. I think it's probably been molded here in the gray plastic and not likely painted. This technically could fit to both the heads, although it works the best with the green one, just because the green one doesn't have the spikes on the back of the head. 
Uh, with these open curves on either side of the helmet, you can actually easily fit it over top of the ears of the green gremlin. And I guess technically, too, you could have it facing the other way around, although it fits a lot better from the front. And again, just to show you, to take that helmet and put it onto the brown one. First of all, he's not dressed for the job at all, but because he does have the spikes sticking out the back of the head, it doesn't fit as well. You kind of have to just move the ear a little bit, but it does still fit and survive the blizzard test if you want to put it on the brown gremlin instead. A lot of accessories, a lot of accessories. Okay, so let's get down to looking at the actual individual gremlins. We'll start first with the green one because I actually think I like the brown one a little bit more. Its color scheme is something that really is very different from other gremlins we've looked at in the past. Green gremlin does have different colors than what we're used to seeing, but still, it very much feels very much like a gremlin we've gotten in the past. Uh, the closest one I could use as a comparison, again, to bring back in the brain gremlin, in some ways, it does look like they're probably using very similar molds, if not identical molds to one another, but they obviously would have changed some of the things. Like the ears are one thing that is different between the two gremlins. Colors are obviously very much drastically changed too, and the green brain gremlin did have, obviously he's a smarter gremlin after all, does have, of course, the spectacles on the front of his face. But it does seem like they may have used some of the molds from one figure to the other. And again, that's fine. If it means that we are going to be getting more Gremlins figures, I say welcome, welcome the idea of bringing back some of these molds. The molds are too good, not just to use the second time. Unfortunately, though, with mine, the denim, would you consider that a denim? I guess that would be just a blue shirt, sleeveless shirt, has all these frayed threads. You can see, I mean, I could probably just keep unraveling this. I'm going to have to take a few... Uh, a few passes with scissors and see if I can just trim that up. I didn't trim it off at the beginning of this review, even though I acknowledged I saw it at the beginning and I thought, you know, I should probably cut it, but I thought I'll leave it on there because I did want to show you guys the way that the figures came out of the packaging. Like these threads are a little on the more looser side and yeah, I probably just got to take some scissors and clean that up a little bit. Other than that though, I like, I really like the head sculpt on this one. It's not my favorite of the two, but I do think that NECA once again has done a, a delivered a fantastic job on these gremlin figures. The green works really well, and then you've got these nice little striped patches that they've got on the sides of the cheek, the top, right around the brow area. Like, the colors are so good, always on these gremlins, and it really continues to be why the reasoning why uh, gremlins is one of my favorite things that uh, NECA has continued to put out over the years. The coloring is, I think, is the best stuff that NECA puts out there, is, is the paint that they do on these gremlins. I mean, just, like, look at the patching on the back here. It kind of looks like something you would see with a snake, for example, all these browns, and they've even gone and outlined the areas of the browns there too. Sculpting is really good on this one. And like I said, it does wear, this one does have the short sleeveless blue shirt, and then underneath there, there's a white shirt. If I was just to roll this up, it's essentially just a gremlin body underneath here. Um, it's got the longer arms, as you would expect to see with a lot of these gremlins. Like the arms, I'm just going to compare them between the two. The arms look to be the same. The top arms also seem to be the same. And it also looks like as well they're reusing the legs from one figure to the other. Um, now this one, I'm going to talk quickly about the articulation. It doesn't have articulation here in the mouth. That's one thing that seems pretty consistent with the gremlins' two figures is that they don't seem to have jaw articulation, which is fine. I'm not. I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over that. But for the articulation, though, on these figures, nonetheless, he does have a ball joint that goes back and forth this way. There is no articulation, sadly, on the newer ears of these Gremlins figures. They used to have a lot of more articulation, especially on the Ultimate Gremlins, more from the Gremlins 1 line. But the Gremlins 2 stuff doesn't seem to have articulation for the ears, doesn't have articulation for the mouth either. And again, that's... Not a deal breaker at all for me. Head moves back and forth this way. You can move the head down just a little bit and have it looking up only just a little bit. Did you just miss that? I thought we kind of quickly go went through that. Down only just a little bit. Up just a little bit more. Arms do come out. So they're not limited at all by the fact he does have the white sleeve shirt. You can technically rotate the arms back and forth really all the way around if you wanted to. He does have a swivel in his arm, which also allows that same joint to hinge the elbow back and forth. Hands rotate all the way around. And you can also hinge those also back and forth. Um, just to move this up, the figure looks almost as if he would have a swivel cut, but it's just the way they've actually painted down below here. See, there's a very stark line, the lighter cream color down below that orangey kind of yellowish cream color down below. And then more the green coloring a little further up, definitely didn't paint that, but they just kept it kind of kept it to the molding of the plastic. Although, you know, to be looking at it, it does look like it's actually painted plastic and not just the green plastic. Uh, legs do split out only just by a little bit. You can take the legs and move them forward and back. There's a bend only in the single in the knee. And then there's that same single hinge in the lower ankle that allows the foot also to rotate back and forth also as well. Green Gremlin looks good. I don't know what name I would probably call him like Larry or something like that. That seems like a very construction name to have. Larry. Larry and Joe. 
Having a look at Joe, even though that's not really technically the name of the gremlin, I really like this one. This was my favorite of the two. Even though it looks less dressed for the job, this one doesn't have any clothes to speak of, it actually really is a really interesting looking gremlin. And I was really trying to kind of come up with when was the last time we actually saw like a gremlin of this color scheme. And there hasn't been really a lot any, I mean, really. I mean, like the striping of just the yellow and the orange alone here on the arms, the interesting pattern work that they've got here on the chest. And again, one of the coolest looking head sculpts. Though it does, unfortunately, yeah, forfeit some of the articulation. You know, this might be one of my favorite recent gremlins. I might even put that pretty high on the list. Top, top five favorite gremlin figures that we've gotten, just because the color is so good on this one. Funny enough, though, it actually does have articulation on the ears. So you can move the ears up if you wanted to. Uh, kind of like kind of like the idea actually of having the ears a little bit higher back myself but you can do that if you want to because again he does have the articulation in the ears strange like like that one doesn't have it but this one does i wonder if they have maybe reused this head sculpt from a previous i'm just trying to think to myself like what other it's not daffy it's not george just trying to think of some of the other gremlins two figures that could have maybe used some of the molds from this one or vice versa can't think of one this one does, of course, have the fish fin there on the back of the head, but the coloring is really good on this one. No articulation on the mouth, but again, you've got a big smile from, from cheek to cheek, and you got some really cool, clever sculpting that they've actually put in there as well. I really like the eyes on this one, too. The slitted sections of the black, and then you've got the outlining there of the yellow. Boy, that's a, that's a nice color scheme on this gremlin. Like, again, all the lower half of it pretty much is a carryover from what we get from this guy here, but the coloring is so drastically different. So many cool colors going on here. Uh, yeah, it's very obvious to see which one is my favorite of the two. Now, again, his articulation is going to be pretty much the same, although being the fact he doesn't have, of course, the clothing, it's a lot easier to see kind of everything that's going on here. Has still the same articulation in the head, but it now benefits from the articulation in the ears that wasn't present on this guy here. Arms do come out still the same way. You can, again, move them back and forth this way. Not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the articulation as we've already fully discussed it from head to toe on this one. Still the hinge on the elbows, still the rotation in the arms, still the rotation in the hands and the hinge back and forth. No waist articulation, legs do split. Yeah, 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 I know. Hinge on the knees, hinge on the ankles. And again, you got that little ankle pivot going on there as well. By the way, both these figures do also possess peg holes on the undersides of their feet. So yeah, if you did want to use yourself a display stand, uh, the figures don't have too much of a problem standing, although it's just more a case of getting the feet properly posed. But I say I like these. I like these a lot. I like them for the fact that, first of all, we get a lot of new accessories that we haven't gotten before. I mean, NECA really went to town. I mean, they really threw a lot of cool new stuff with this release. One of my personal favorites being the Acme TNT barrel. Uh, not only that, are you getting brand new, new painted gremlins in the sense that, again, if we were just to part the ways, part the seas in the middle and bring in like gre brain gremlin, which I guess would be one to kind of be the best to compare with the other gremlins here. Yeah, again, being that they use, I'm guessing, a lot of the same molds from this figure to this figure, at least the color scheme is drastically different with the green. And then again, just to look at this one, this one has all the colors I would really, I mean, if you were to say to me, what is a good example of some of NECA's best paintwork? First of all, I would say the Gremlins. I would almost even say like, look at this guy, Joe, are we going to call him Joe? Why not? Larry and Joe, Larry and Joe, the construction working gremlins demolition team. Uh, this one really has some interesting color scheme to him. I just love the browns. I love the oranges and I love the yellows. He is my favorite. Definitely of the two. First, first of all, I did want to make apologies to fans of the Friday 13th franchise that while we were talking about the Acme TNT barrel, I movie dropped Friday 13th part four probably confusing many of those fans were thinking, well, wait a minute, what, what canister in Friday 13th? I, okay. Before leaving those comments, I actually meant Friday 13th part eight, Jason takes Manhattan, the memorable scene where take Jason takes uncle Charles and puts him inside the barrel of toxic waste. What a way to go. Now, for NECA, down the road, if they hope to release a Friday 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, Jason Voorhees, I would certainly say reuse this barrel. It doesn't have to come with the lid because, of course, the lid is gone, but put a little bit of the toxic waste, like mold toxic waste into the top of it. And even for fun, you could even have like Charles's leg actually hanging out the top of the barrel. Please, NECA, make use of that. You already got the mold anyways. Why not get a little bit more mileage out of the mold and just not package that along with Jason Voorhees, please, and thank you. As for certainly the rest of the accessories, there's so many accessories that you can only really display with the figures. And to be all honest, actually, the brown gremlin seems to do a better job of things that are like the accessories that have smaller handles. Like the mallet, I think, fits better in the gremlin, the brown gremlin's hand than it does the green. And also the stick of dynamite as well. Now, the bushel of dynamite, are we gonna, is that the right way to, a bushel of dynamite? 
a taped up bunch of dynamite. The bushel of dynamite, either way, actually I've got in the hand right now of the green gremlin, simply just because I popped and swapped the hands out that come in clue with it. Like I said, the figure has come in clue with a lot of accessories, and I decided also, because he looks a little bit more dressed for the part, we might as well actually get the gremlin beer into the hand of the green gremlin. While, yes, yeah, some of the molds look like they have been shared from previous gremlins we got before, like the green gremlin does look like a lot of the mold was carried over from the brain gremlin, which is fine. Again, if they're going to be using that mold and getting the most mu most mileage again out of that mold as they can, if it means we are going to be getting new gremlins, I say yes. Yes, please. The green gremlin is cool because this one does have the actual uh, clothing. I mean, yeah, I've got a whole bunch. I mean, the more I'm looking at it, it just seems like the thread is falling off of the, the vest here that he's wearing. This makeshift vest that he's decided to make for himself. Where are these gremlins buying these clothes, by the way, that these all fit them properly? Are they shopping at kids' stores? Because, I mean, that would have to be like a kid's small in order to fit that gremlin properly. But I'm going to probably have to take a little, uh, some scissor time. Take some scissor time and actually trim up the threading that actually has become a quite loose here on the blue, on the green gremlin's blue short sleeveless shirt. But this one does have the, uh, like I said, the, the, the actual clothing. The brown gremlin doesn't have it. But what it does have, though, is I feel to be a better paint job. Still looking at the brown gremlin, trying to pinpoint where that mold's been used before. It's not Daffy. I don't think it's Daffy at least, but the colors that they chose on this one, it's just all the browns, all the cream colors, all that beige and all that kind of orangey color that the tan color that they've added to it is one of the more colorful and one of my favorite gremlins I think we've gotten in a while. I might even still say I would put this, the, the brown gremlin, are we calling him Joe? Larry and Joe? Larry and Joe. Okay. Joe the gremlin. That's not really its name, but Joe the gremlin, I would say a hits probably the top five of my favorite gremlins from a color scheme standpoint that NECA has put out over the years. Which of the two gremlins do you like? Do you like the green gremlin more? Do you like the brown gremlin more? Let me know down below in the comments section. Now, when it comes to the destruction gremlins, demolition gremlins, I, I'm just looking at the fact that they're just destroying everything. The demolition gremlins I actually found over on Entertainment Earth's website. If you guys are interested and haven't had any luck actually trying to track down this set for yourself and do want to get one for your collection, then you can actually click the link down below in the video description that will take you on over to Entertainment Earth's website and you can order one over there. Also, if you enjoyed this video and you, and you certainly loved this video, hit it with a like. If you're loving the content and certainly want to stick around for more, then might I suggest that you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. I can't believe I actually name dropped Friday 13th Part 4. And I have to turn in my Friday 13th membership card. Yeah, I do have Friday 13th membership card. It's got a big picture. Actually, you know, looking at it, actually, they used Friday 13th Part 5, Roy, which is, seems somewhat ironic because that's not really Jason. Anyway, membership. I'm not going to cash it in just yet. Maybe a little later if I make a few more mistakes, I'm going to cash in, but I'm going to hold on to it for the time being. Also, make sure at the very end of this video, if you're pop, popping up, will be a playlist. If you guys did want to check out other the other reviews that I've done for Gremlins over the years, check out that playlist. That's also going to be there as well. While we have wrapped up things right now for Demolition Gremlins, drinking responsibly, of course, there's definitely going to be a lot more neck reviews coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.